Hey guys, welcome to That Pelter Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Today, <laughs> uh, we have our paddleboard challenge. We have our 350 pound paddleboard challenge. So the rules for the 300, uh, the rules for Dan and Mick's 350 pound paddleboard challenge are, must include overdrive, uh -huh. modulation, uh -huh. delay, uh -huh. and at least one other. Okay. Yeah? I'm good. Good? I think so. There's no individual limit on each pedal spend. And we're not including the board and power because for reasons we'll explain. So, shall we see? Let's do it. Okay, hey, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool! Dude, that's awesome! It's pretty cool, isn't did it? Did you do that? I did. That's amazing. Well, that's commitment. All, all will become all will become clear soon. That's so funny. Okay, you've got some nice stuff on there. I well, do. Give me. Um, I've had to write mine down because I can't remember. But um, give us a, give us a, give us a quick run through of your pedals and the prices. Okay, so the Elect Lady. Yeah. Forty six pounds. Yep. Yeah. The Soul Food, seventy pounds. Hang so on. One hundred sixteen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Blues Driver is 80 pounds. Oh, 196. Yep. The Maxon is 96 pounds. Really? Yeah. But, 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 I've just... What's that, 284? Yeah, I've I've smashed it. However, this is the, this is... They're normally 200 quid. They're normally 200 <laughs> quid. But I I went in and I saw it and I went, oh, how much is that? I said, oh, that's, that's um, 96 quid. And I went... Oh, fantastic. That's awesome. But I've just found out it's the end of the line oh. discontinued thing. So it's I'm having it because it was it's brand new yeah. in the shop. So it's either 286 or 386 at full price. But hey, when you walk into a store, you're not paying full retail price for everything, are you? You're just going in, you're saying, "What can you do me?" Yes. Mr. Shopkeeper? Yes. And I had and that was there. Okay. Brand spanking. So you you've got uh yeah, so you've got uh, modulation, yep. two drives, and delay. and delay. So your extra pedal was the boost, and the, the overdrive. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've gone for electro harmonics. You've gone for five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look Check at this out. you. Electro harmonics cray on seventy six. There's two versions of this, and apparently they're exactly the same apart from the graphics. Right. Sixty two pounds. Nice. Ibanez Tube Screamer Mini, perennial favourite of ours. Uh, Sixty two pounds. Mm -hmm. TC Corona Chorus Plus Special Edition, which I'll come on to in a minute, £109. TC Electronic The Profit Delay, £49. Wow. And the... Uh, £49. I know. Well, we'll come on to that. And another uh, uh, old perennial favourite of ours, the Moor Trellicopter Tremolo for £42. £324. Oh, dude. Which left me 26 quid. Well done. And you That's can, fantastic. You can see what happened with that £26. <laughs> now. Hello, Mick here. It's Monday night before Tuesday tomorrow when we're filming the Pedalboard Challenge. Uh, I'm in my garden. This is Boy. Say hello, Boy. Are you interested at all? Not really. He's lazy. Um, and I've just been to B&Q. I bought some stuff and things, including this. And my secret ingredient, which is this. Find out more tomorrow. Right. So as I said, it's about quarter to eight. Yeah, quarter to eight, Monday night. Let's see how fast I can build this pedal board. And that's a wrap. It's now two minutes to nine, so it's taken me an hour and ten minutes. Um get the boys back. Uh it's Wimbledon soon in the UK. So that's my grass court inspired pedal board. I've still got to attach the grass and uh, I've got some feet to put on, but that's it. It's done. Not bad, huh? That's what you can't. If I do this, the grass will fall off. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, total cost of the bits for that. Um, we'll do this in the video tomorrow, but about 25 quid. I got really stung for the grass. That was expensive. So there we are. That kudos to you, sir. I said I had that or well, this one lying around. I was gonna get some a bit of a floorboard and just cover the whole thing in Velcro, and I thought, no, I won't do that because you it's know, silly. It's that's silly, <laughs> and who would be so silly? 
I love that. I love that. It's summer, man. It's Glastonbury, it's Wimbledon. That's it's awesome, dude. Right, okay. Well so um, I well literally done. haven't plugged this in at all. I built it this morning. Um, so, all right, uh, you're going first then. And I guess you're the same. So we're going to uh, power down. We're going to plug everything in, get a sound up using the Hot Rod Deluxe and see what happens next. Great. Right. Well then, very cool. It's nice, isn't it? Some good sounds there. Some great uh, sounds there. In case we haven't said already, we're just using one amp today. We're using the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, given that, you know, it's... In the spirit of the budget conscious. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, it's by no means a cheap amp, but it is kind of middle of the road, professional amp that lots and lots of people own yeah. and uh, is well known as a good pedal platform, whatever that means. So come on then. Uh, uh, was I surprised? I was trying to think what you would choose. I guessed that would be on there. You know, it's really funny. I struggled with this. Me too. I was that close to having the Devon Townsend Ocean Machine. Okay. For the, instead of the the delay, and you know, like that and an OCD, but I just couldn't. I couldn't make it work because <laughs> I needed because that had delay and reverb, but I needed modulation. So anyway. Um, I was the same. I had, a, I had a, <clears throat> um, an Excel spreadsheet up 
with all the things I wanted to include. Right. Uh, going, you know, and when you work into a budget, it's all about how they're going to play together mm. and uh, getting the compromise right, spending more money on your, you know, whatever and yep. less money on your whatever else. Yep. Um, there's three of these pedals I've never even heard before. Right. I just, I went went with them on Reputation and okay. on a couple of YouTube demos because I knew the job that I wanted them to do. Interesting. Okay. So let's, I mean, let's start with you then. All right. The, the Electric Lady flanger, Elect Lady, I don't, we don't need to say a huge amount about that, do we? No, it's my thing. The Electric Mistress, I love it. You know, that's, uh, it's my... As far as when modulation is concerned, that's the thing that he's, I love. He's already tearing up. Because I'm getting from, you know, it's, it's <laughs> wonderful. It's wonderful. And it, it's, a, you know, it's a ringing endorsement that, so Dan's original, if you've not seen um, the various videos we've done that feature it, it's this. Dan's joint first favourite pedal of all time mm -hmm. ever. I'm just going to move it around in case we have a nasty reflection going on. Yeah, uh, it's a very special thing. It's, you know, it's, it, for me, it just instantly captivates an, an era, a vibe. As soon as you stick it on, it's, 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 it's a very emotive thing for me, the sound of that. But you can't have it on your pedal board because? Well, a number of things. Why? It's, it's, it's so old, it's very temperamental. Yeah. So it's not, I couldn't tour with it. Yeah. Um, and even though this is, you know, it's 95% the way there. Which is not you bad. Know, what not does bad. it cost? It's not bad. Uh, £46. Pounds. There's something I want to say about that uh, as the video goes sure. on. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing. But that's, for me, modulation I can get. Obviously, tremolo yeah. and phaser and all this sort of stuff I love. But with, with the simple moving of the, of the dials, so standard... Uh, standard flanger sound. I've got quite a lot of um, colour and range, uh, sort of colour specifically dialed. Move the range up a bit more. So I, I love that. I love that sound. It's such a cool sound. Yeah. Such a cool and sound. when you combine that with drive, I, I really love putting it before my drive. So if I put that into the soul food. just it moves at times it can be almost like a format filter because it gives, gives it this oh yeah. it sort of changes the, the the eq curve of the format filter i learned last week being vowel sounds yeah 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 so yeah as far as if i had to pick one modulation pedal that's it that's it every awesome day awesome awesome soul food you soul just heard food. it there so this is essentially a clon type it is but it's a it's We've got some serious, everyone's hungry. Everyone's got serious rumbling bellies going on, so you'll just have to, uh, uh, you'll have to. I had my protein bar as a, as a, as a mid-morning snack, right. so I'm fine. Okay. So, the soul food, I, when these first came out, I tried one and I really liked it. Um, but I had, you know, I had other clans, I had um, my Ryra and stuff, and I, but, one someone I didn't I, I knew didn't have one was Dave Gregory 
So I got him one for Christmas, and it is his main, really main, main sort of drive boost pedal. Wow. He absolutely loves it. That into his matchless DC30 is insane. Come on, let's hear it then. Let's hear it. So here's the clean sound. In isolation, it's actually quite an ugly sound, isn't it? Oh yeah. Because it's all envelopey mids. It's it just gets rid of all the bottom end. It just yeah. goes. Mrah. Yeah. Uh, um, f f for anyone who's who's never had the um, good fortune to compare them, it's quite different from the Clon, isn't it? It's quite different. It doesn't from the have that kind of upper mid sizzly thing that the Clon has. So it's more of a it's more like a tube screamer that's been to the gym and. Yeah, it's an it's an angrier sounding yeah. thing. Does it have a voltage pump in it? Do you know? I don't know. I yeah, checked. I have it sounds know. like it's got quite a lot of headroom. Yeah, it's um, it's still very dynamic. Uh, but what I love about it, on its own, if I kick a little bit of the delay in, yep. and then I work the volume control on the guitar. So not not crazy gain, but it still it, it has all the essential frequencies yeah, 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 and sort yeah. of move the amp into feedback and, and it's very dynamic. But the great thing about it is when I use it in conjunction with the blues driver. Right. Now, you know, you everyone knows I'm a fan of this pedal and have been for a long time. One of the things I love about the blues driver is the way Andy Timmons uses it. Yep. So if I have the gain all the way up. It's great. It's a fantastic overdrive pedal. But the way Andy uses it, he dimes, dials back the volume, and he gets. It's it's the best clean sound. Just compare so that. Nice. Just, if you just play a sec, I'll switch it on and off. So it's it's a very dynamic pedal that used in conjunction with the volume control on the guitar can give you quite a dynamic range of sounds. Now I'm I'm slightly surprised to see it after the Soul Food. Now here's the reason because I the Soul Food cuts cuts so much bottom end. Yeah. That if I put the Soul Food after it and I use the Soul Food as a booster, it's too it's too shaped. Yeah. There's there's because you, all of a sudden you have so much gain and no bottom end. Yeah. But what happens if I put the soul food before it? So here's the blues driver by itself. Soul food into it. I mean, it's nasty and aggressive, but it gives me all the gain I need. So that sound with a bit of delay. <laughs> So as far as uh, I get the stacked overdrive thing, I can use yeah. the the sofa on its own for sort of a cleaner 
solo thing, and then the blues driver gives me a range of overdrive sounds that sort of really work. It's good. For anyone who doesn't do it, two over, it's the reason that we've both chosen two overdrive pedals is you've got your clean amp sound, you've got both pedals separately, mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got both pedals together. Yep. It's plus your volume control. It's a lot of sound in there. It's, it's a lot, lot of, of gain range. It's the, and it's the same reason, you know, it's, it's no surprise that, you know, you have a full range OD and a treble uh, tube screamer. Yeah. I've got a full range OD and a, and a, and a clone type thing. Yeah. Same thing DNM drive. Yeah, yeah. Full range, full range OD, mid boost thing. Yeah, sort well, of. maybe we'll talk about that a little more when we come on to uh, why, I've, why I've chosen that. But that's the, that's, you can pretty much guarantee that that's the way we'll do it every time, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And finally, we get to the Maxon 89 Pro. Now, I have, uh, I've got three of these, the Maxons. You've also got an original Ibanez one, so. Well, I've got, well, I've got one, so yeah, I've got, I've got three of the original ones. I've got, so there's the, there's the 89 up there, and then there's the 88, was it 88 or 8808, which is the 18 volt one. Uh. For anyone who doesn't know, Maxon and Ibanez, Ibanez have a shared history. Mm -hmm. So the person behind the Maxon company designed, was the company that designed um, many of the, the classic Ibanez circuits, uh, including, um, oh wow, including the fabled 9 series, which of course uh, included analog delay, the tube Just screamer, rumor. and what else was there, uh, a yellow one? Yeah, was there's an a flanger, was there's flanger? a chorus. Ah, the, the, um, the super overdrive, yeah. I think it was called, or the, no, the distortion plus. Yeah, or distortion. So, uh, something yeah. like that. Anyway, um, so that is uh, Maxon and Ibanez's shared history, and as you can see, they look very similar indeed, mm. and um, Maxon continues to make really nice, high quality, uh, Japanese made very nice stomp boxes. Yeah, which and is that's, a, that's the precursor, which is the same format as the original 808. Oh, well, yeah, so I've just noticed that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so um, that's 18 volts. That right. One. Um, so anyway, so I've been a fan of those pedals for a long time. Um, they, they just sound a little bit different to a DM2. Yeah. Um, but I've always really liked them. But it is a bucket brigade analog it is, yes, delay. Yes, it, it's a bucket brigade analog delay. And what I love about the the Pro is it gives you two. Yeah, I, I didn't. I hadn't realised that. So you've got a single stage here, or you've got dual. Now that's really cool. Whenever we've used the like the the tape delays or the the Echo Plex or the Echo Rec, and we've put a couple of heads on, and you get that, it, it almost gives it a reverby type quality. Mm. So, with it on just by itself, mm. with that off. Keep playing. Every time we kick the delay on, there's a little delay, and then there's a, obviously a hell of a buffer or something happening when mm. the delay is on it mm. just gets all this extra fidelity and stuff so even before you turn any of the delay on it's obviously got a sound of its own yeah yeah definitely straight it's, away yeah it's a wonderful sounding thing so when i saw that there 
asked them what it was, I went bargain, and I just found out that they were originally a lot more expensive. So, you know, so maybe it's a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, but a, you've got a, you've got a, you've got a Wimbledon pedal board, so you know, <laughs> let's bought, call it even. a full price. Dan would have uh, would have busted the budget, but we'll just say again. You know, you walk into your guitar shop or go online or whatever it is you do, and you've got a budget, so you don't. You don't buy stuff at full retail. You buy stuff for whatever you find it. Go in there and work your magic, baby. Yeah, and if something is, uh, you know, if something is reduced, happy days, happy yeah. days. But so that's, you know, obviously I'm a big f fan of my delays and all the stuff. But if I can only have one delay, it will be a simple analog delay. An analog delay, yeah. Every single time. Let's just hear those repeats once again. So we've said this many times, um, an analog delay, a bucket brigade type analog delay has a very specific sound to the repeats. It's where the repeats get darker as they roll off, which is somewhat different to a uh, standard digital delay. I love that. I Some love frequencies that. going on there. Um, I'm a sucker for self-oscillation. I was watching uh, Radiohead at Glastonbury on Saturday yes. night or whenever it was. How good was that? And Ed's down there. We were in the magic. Tweaking his... Man. I didn't realise this until I went to see them live, but so many of those sounds and the those you know things that make that Radiohead sound of that washer stuff and it's Ed. It's just, just it. making. Yeah, yeah. He, he is a he is a sonic genius. That guy. He's just he's like painting yeah. with his sounds. It's remarkable. Yeah. Absolutely remarkable. Um, yeah. So Ed O'Brien from Radiohead. <laughs> have we mentioned anyone else today? Uh, we have Dave Gregory. <laughs> um, Andy Timmons. Andy, Andy Timmons. Timmons. <laughs> Sorry, too excited about about pedals to. Uh... So Ed O'Brien uses um, Dan builds Ed's. Uh, pedal board for Radiohead, uh, which is what we were talking about. And one thing that struck me as we're turning these on and off, it's been so long since I've heard a pop of a switch. Because <laughs> normally <laughs> we're plugged into uh, one of Dan's loop switches, whether it's G2 or a strip looper, and you never hear that. You don't hear the pop and all the hiss yeah. and all the crap, crappy oh. noise you get. Yeah. It's nice, it feels like kind of old school. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very old school. So very anyway, cool. that's, that's my, that's my, my 350 pound board. Nice. Winner. Loads of sounds. Okay, right. Let's just do this. All right, brace yourself. Okay, on to the uh, Wimbledon inspired. So the story is... New I, balls, please. I, uh, <laughs> I've definitely chosen the cray on the tube screamer, the chorus and the uh, trillicopter mm -hmm. on my little spreadsheet of dreams. And the delay I wanted to use was the Flashback Mini. Right. Which we've featured before. It's one of TC's Flashback delays. And it's great because you can beam in various sounds from your smartphone uh, settings for it. The only thing is they're 83 quid. And that put me budget. eight pounds over budget. Oh, hang on. But is that including your no, no, no. board? This is before the board. This is the before board. the board. Okay. Ah, oh, dude. So I was eight pounds over budget, so I couldn't have that. So I had a look around for another delay that I could get. And 
lo and behold, the profit turns up at £49. So I'd saved a load of money. With the remaining money I had came the border. The grass wasn't intentional. I was just wandering around home base and I saw it there and I was like, yes. It's perfect. This is great. It's, not, this, it's, it's, it's not exactly practical. Um, well, you know, I've, I've we'll also, find a way. For anyone interested, this stuff is really handy. It's this non-slip rubber matting. I use it for lots of things. We used to use that on, I was a crew on a yacht in Sydney Harbour, and we used to use that on all the tables because you put your drinks on it and it wouldn't ah. slip. It's very clever. Anyway, and I, I, I have used that on just regular pedal boards just to stop stuff slipping around. Seems to um, make quite a nice uh, junction between the bottom of the pedal and the fake grass there. <laughs> and fair play to home base, you know, look at that. You've even got little dead bits of grass in there. It genuinely looks like real grass. That is amazing. <laughs> That is amazing. Completely useless as a lawn, but quite good as a pedal board covering. Anyway, enough, enough silliness. Right, same as Dan. Two overdrive pedals, really important. Right, Crayon. I'd never played this before. Right. Um, as Dan said, if you choose two overdrives, it can be helpful to have like a full range overdrive-y, almost veering into distortion. Mm -hmm. So it's not too EQ shaped, although having heard that this morning, it's more, more shaped than I thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, and then something more mid-humped, which I am a big fan of. So together, here's the clean sound of the of the Hot Rod Deluxe. Fairly spiky, you know, as you would expect. And then the crayon just gives it a bit of... I, I really like that, that the, the way it's clipping is kind of, there's a, there's an a, a real edge to it. Yeah. But so it's really great. Before uh, we had one kicking around earlier, I don't think we've got it here now. Before I'd heard stuff like the Hudson Broadcast and the JHS Color Box, mm -hmm. I couldn't get my head around those sounds that were just a bit spikier right. and a bit kind of... Angular. Yeah, it's, I don't know what you would, I don't know how you would describe it, but it's not that sort of smooth. Mm. Um, just overdrive that I like with the mid hump. It's not that bit more of a touch of square wave. And yeah, stuff, it's like it? you know, it's maybe it's a bit of key for a bit of. Yeah, right. It's just rockier. Yeah, it's just rockier, and and it's really great as a bass as a bass kind of rhythm sound. So you could even on the bridge pickup of the Strat here. Great. Still is a bit humpy, isn't it? Yeah, but it's lovely. Yeah. If you turn the bottom end of the top, and, and I'm wondering if the mid range is fixed. Well, it kind of is. So they say that if you turn the bass and the treble down, you get more mid hump. You get right? a mid hump. Yeah. And if you turn them up, you get obviously less mid hump. Definitely getting into color box territory there. Okay. I'm wondering if that's like a Baxton doll type. EQ circuit where they kind of play with each other a bit more. Could be. Here's maximum gain. It's a, it's a pretty good sound. Oh, I, think. I think it's great. See, even at that sort of maximum gain, the, the notes have definition and you can hear it. You know, yeah. it sounds really good. I actually thought it might have more overdrive than that. Um, uh, could, would you mind passing me your Les Paul a sec? Let's just see what Les Paul, Paul does to it. Thank you. So, obviously, uh, humbuckers, much different guitar. Let's see what this does. Come on, in you go.
probably some tweaker route to do at the amp end, but Ace. it's That's pretty good sound. Ace. And then the low gain sound with, with the Les Paul. <laughs> likes the buckers. And there's a nice cushioning effect with the grass. <laughs> Thank you. Right, moving on. Dear old Tube Screamer Mini, we like this a lot. We do. Just awesome. So kind of doing a similar job to the soul food. That's the sound, yep. And if it boosts the crayon, haven't actually done this yet, so this will be a new experience. That'll work. Quite a lot of gain. Quite and a lot of gain. <laughs> Your point being, sir. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Um, so not, there isn't like, um, with those two pedals, I was expecting the total amount of gain to be a bit more. Okay. In terms of getting a kind of a really rocky sound, but actually I think in a performance environment, for most things I do, that's that's easily enough. Yeah. I th Especially when you hit it with uh, high power pickups. Sure. If we crank the gain on the tube screamer, lowered the gain but increased the volume on the crayon, I reckon. Oh, really? Push the tube screamer? You, you mean? push the tube screamer. Let's see. Remember, it's a, it's a strap bridge pickup, so oh, yeah. probably with some humbuckers, yeah, you'd, you'd be into... Sounds great, though. You'd be into enough gain there. Right, um, Corona Chorus Plus. Now, this is a standard Corona Chorus from TC, £109. TC's first ever pedal was the... It's an acronym. SCF. SCF, there you go. Stereo course flanger, yeah. right? Stereo course flanger should be easy enough, shouldn't it? Um, Forty years ago, last year, uh, I, so many people have used them. Yeah, yeah. I was at Frankfurt with Tor, who's coming on the show very soon. Ah, yes, Tor from TC Electronics. Yeah. <laughs> Love that Sorry, guy. Sorry, TC Electronic, no S. Oh, okay. There you go. Anyway, was out with Tor, and in Frankfurt, and we started a conversation at like. 10 p.m. and I'd had a beer or two about why they should be move heaven and earth to re actually reissue the original one. Two o'clock in the morning, I'm still banging on about it, and he graciously has sat there listening to me going, "Yeah, but it's such a great thing, man." And you know, it was so funny. But it is a classic, a classic pedal. Um, uh, Mister. Whitecliffs of Dover, wasn't that? Eric Johnson. Eric, Whitecliffs of Dover, what an idiot. Mr. Eric Johnson. So this is the, that's the pedal that he uses to separate his two deluxes. Yeah. Um, I was very surprised to see peeking behind Joe Bonamassa's uh, four tweeds 
was one. Really? Splitting the amps. Ah, yep. wow. Yep. Okay, yep. very interesting. So this isn't that, because no, but that <laughs> contains... Uh, non rush compliant components. Yeah, so they're not allowed to build it anymore. No. So this is essentially a TC Corona Chorus, as they, you know, the, I think they're green, the Corona Chorus, done in um, SCF livery with some additional tone prints, which we'll try and load in in a sec, um, from the original pedal. Oh, wow, yeah. really? So it sounds like this. It's got three modes. With the switch in the up position is the standard chorus mode, TC chorus mode. Right. So predictable, we're gonna play it's the add lovely. nine chords. It's lovely. And then in, with the switch all the way down is a tri chorus mode. which obviously takes on much greater width than everything it should you be using at stereo, which we're mm -hmm. not. In the middle is the tone print setting. Now, for anyone who hasn't seen TC's uh, tone print. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Airplane mode off. Come on, let's see if it works. Let's see if it works, Dan. On your smartphone, uh, you will have an app called Tone Print, which is here somewhere. There it is. And we'll open it up. And it will go, ooh, just resyncing, reading artist images from cache. Should have. You had me at cache. Checking for new stuff. There we go. And then you come up with this screen, by product. Let's find the Corona Chorus, which is what it is. And somewhere in that list, I'm going to flick through it, will be three new settings that they've done for this special edition. Wow. Right, come on, come on. Multiple tone prints by TC Electronic. Come on, come on, come on. Alternative. Yeah, there we are, look. SCF Chorus. Oh, wicked. SCF, SCF flanger, flanger and SCF Pitch Modulation. Ah. This is science. And it works like this. Do you need to press the pedal down or anything? I don't think so. There we go. Now what you will have seen there is that it, it flashed green on the screen. So that's the pitch modulation pitch one. Pitch modulation, yeah. right. Yeah. That's um, the flanger. I'll just do one more. Uh, SCF flanger. Oh. Oh, it really man. does your head in, doesn't it? Oh. What, why is that? Oh, it's like someone's drilling a hole through my head with a tiny, tiny, tiny little drill. He must have sensitive hearing. So cool, very, so that's um, very nice. quick whip through the TC uh, tone print app there. 
Obviously there are many, 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 many more sounds available to put into the Corona Chorus if you want, some by artists, um, some by TC Electronic, etc. Now, you, go on. A uh, quick question, can you use that for any modulation sound? Like, can you get phasers and stuff in that, or do you need the phaser pedal? No. No? It went red. So there we go. All right, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, profit delay. Now, I went through the same thought process as you going, if I could only have one delay, it would probably be an analog delay. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about that for a minute and thought, actually, I would probably have a clean digital delay mm -hmm. because I've been playing with the new Free the Tone flight time. And awesome. I, I really like that. Uh, 2290 style, really clean. Super clean. Isn't it interesting yeah. because when we did the first uh, thing on real tape, a lot of people were really surprised to see how clean actual tape delay is. Yeah. And I've learned a lot since we started doing that because mm. I always thought my favorite type of delay was an analog delay and it's actually not. My favorite mm. type of delay is a pretty clean delay actually. Right. Obviously those other styles of delay, especially the Echo X style delay you use in situations where it requires that and it's, mm. a, it's a different sound, but just as a basic delay. In fact, a slight story, uh, doing Brad Paisley just recently, <laughs> doing Brad Paisley just recently. <laughs> you don't bring me flowers. Yep. Uh, I was surprised that in his rack, there's just an old DD3. That's his main delay. They, they, That's they, his main slapback yeah, delay. They sound fantastic, those things. DD2, yeah. DD3. Awesome. His tech reckons there's a little compressor circuit in there. Genuinely a proper compressor circuit, which they didn't put in the following pedals. Okay. We'll go into this in another. Right. I wonder if it might be a little compander circuit in there. Could be. Yeah. Said, but that's look. one of the reasons that it sounds the way it does. Was it the DD2? Was it the DD3? Can't remember. Anyway, mm. it's the Boss Digital Delay, whatever. Right. Okay. So TC... But they have a sound. They have a sound that's different to everything after that. And he but reckons then it's again, down to something to do with that. Right. Then again, like the DD6 has its own sound as well. It's funny, they, they all have a thing. It's very interesting. They know how to design stuff, those guys. They're very clever. Uh, as does TC Electronic, of course. So this, they released a series of pedals, um, I don't know, last year sometime. Right. Might even have been at this now, I can't remember. Bigger boxes, much, much, much lower price point. And I think we're all scratching our heads wondering how they hit that kind of price point. TC is now owned by Behringer Group, or the group that owns Behringer. Right. So one would assume that in Behringer's village, in wherever it is, they make all their stuff. Right. They have access to, you know, colossal manufacturing capability. To put out a pedal in a metal box for 49 quid, ship it all the way across the world. That's retail, 49 The manufacturer retail. makes money, the distributor makes money, the retailer so, makes yep. money. There's something... It boggles the mind. There's something I find slightly uncomfortable about that. I don't mind admitting it. Right. We Dan and I have this very privileged position where most of the pedals we use are designed by people that we know. Yeah. And made yeah. by people that we know in places that we yep. know. We have phone numbers and we can call and say, hey. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and and the, there's a value in that. We won't go into that too much longer. But 49 quid for a blooming pedal, I don't know. And they, they that's not even the cheapest pedal you can buy. Mm. It's a digital delay, here's how it sounds.
So not a bad digital delay, and then it has this, uh, you can go for really long delay times if you put it down there. A little bit of artifact in there. Or short ones if you put it up there. It's, it's not the cleanest sounding digital delay in the world ever. Oh, but I like it. It has character, doesn't it? Yeah. Just... It's not, you know, it's all right, isn't it? Fine. So the, the way I would use it is probably And the way I use the chorus mm -hmm. is to thicken rather than a rather than a straight chorus sound. So Something like that, just to give a thickening on the um, on the lead sound. It's probably a bit much. Probably t tame it back a bit more, and just that kind of little bit of delay yeah. as a thickener. Finally, we'll get there in the end. Really, not much to say about this. Yeah, we've used this all the time. Fabulous thing. So good. And on we go. It's very nice. Surprising. I thought, uh, I like the crayon a lot. Mm. I thought it might sound slightly different. Okay. I thought it might have slightly less, less mid than it has. Right. But I would happily 
That's a cool pedal. That's cool, a great cool pedal. First. I'm really impressed with it. Game pedal. Yeah. But the winner is clearly your pedal board. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's... No, no... I, meant, I meant the grass. Oh, I see. <laughs> Next show, we should have the whole yeah. floor done. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. You know, it's not very practical, is it? Let's be honest. It's great. But, you know, it does feel summery. I think tonal integrity, I think your board's got it. Well... And I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because there's one fewer pedal. Maybe. We always say we always say that, you know, three, four pedals, you really don't... It's unlikely that you need... Nobody needs a loop switcher, but, you know, wouldn't probably use one for th two or three pedals. Three or four depends on the pedals. Mm. Well, it all depends on the pedals, but three or four, it starts to depend on the pedals because you might have something that's doesn't like sitting in the in the chain with everything yep. else. I always think five pedals, you really do start to lose some fidelity. Mm. Uh, whether that's bypass circuits, whether it's buffers, whatever it is, mm. or not. For me, that like your clean sound digital delay thing, which is, because Robin Ford does a very similar thing. Yes. Yeah. Short delay time, very clean, and it just thickens things up a little bit. Whereas for me, the analog delay provides more of a background wash. Yeah. You know, and I, I love that one, especially if I'm doing textures and, and chords and stuff. Big fan. Well, the big one of the big benefits of the delays going off um, less bright, so there's quite a dark sound on the repeat, is mm. that it doesn't get in the way of the next thing you play, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 But if you shorten up the delay time, it doesn't have time to get into the delay into, yeah. in, in the way. So, yeah, horses for courses. But no, I'm considering you know, what we're able to achieve with that sort of money. It's fantastic. Yeah, I was surprised actually when I, once I started uh, adding it up. Yeah. Bit of a gerbil with a maximum, but hey, it's all good. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, okay, well guys. Yeah, comments below. See what, tell us what you think. What would you choose differently? So let's say, let's say that was the full price, Dan. Yes. Um, and you had to choose a 95 pound delay. Is there an analog one? In fact, there is an analog delay at 95 quid. Yeah, but you mean the... Um, Ibanez do a mini... Yeah, and that was the one I was going to get. It's right. the mini AD9 yeah. thing. And that was the one I was going to get. So yeah, I probably would get that uh, because I'm a big fan of that sound. But having the, the dual thing, that's like... You know, yeah, that is really cool. Fabulous. That's really cool. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah, let us know what you would get for your 350 quid. I think it'd be fascinating to see what everyone, you know, what everyone's ball would be for that sort of money. You don't have to include a Wimbledon style pedal board, just the pedals itself. <laughs> Fantastic. I paid 350 quid for my Klon many years ago. And I did consider just putting that on the board, but I appreciate that it wouldn't have made for a very good show. <laughs> star of the show, what's the star of the show for you today? I'm really impressed with the Corona Chorus. Are you? I am very impressed with that Corona Chorus. Mm. Um, just hearing those, you know, because the tone prints are great. Yeah. What a great thing to be able to do. Um, I need some earplugs and some maybe a helmet if I'm going to do that that way. Um, but it, yeah, it sounds great. The crayon for me, I think, is spectacular. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, it was, that's been a pleasant surprise. Mm. Pleasant surprise. Yeah. But you know, the 89 Pro <laughs> as well. Beautiful. Surprise, surprise, the yeah, most yeah, expensive yeah. thing. Okay, there we go then. Um, we may play out on some a couple of other guitars uh, just for some other sounds. Uh, but yeah, £350 pedal board challenge. I'd happily gig that. Yeah, me too. I, I'm I'm afraid I would have to add a court master. Right. Just to, to get them out of the signal. Sure. And, and one thing we haven't spoken about is power. It's going to sound like a massive advert. Ever since I started using Dan's modular power system, Regular power supplies are done for me. Right. I'm done with them. Oh, that's great, dude. They're, they're good. They're good. They sound good. They serve, serve a purpose. There's no problem with them. However, every time you, you need something else, you need to buy a new blooming power supply because mm. you either haven't got enough current or you don't have enough adapters or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there is some significant cost in the power powering all of our pedals today yeah. because you've got to generate a couple of adapters all and stuff. all the rest of it. So I'm, I'm never... I, I'm just not going to skimp on that stuff anymore. No, no, of course. I think because it was a when we did your board and we did everything properly, and that was a revelation for you. Absolute wasn't it? revelation. It's yeah. like, what's the point having all that fidelity on there if you're just going to power it adequately? Yeah, yeah. Which is a contentious thing to say, but anyway. So yeah, yeah. I would happily gig that. I would probably add a 
a switcher to yeah. it so that I can hear my amp without going through all that. Sure, sure. Yeah, me too. Brilliant, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. That was so much fun. Um, please subscribe, number one. Uh, also, massive thank you to our preferred retailers. We're nearly at 100,000 subscribers. Are we really? We're, well, we're at oh. 90. We're at 90. And it might be that in the future we're way over 100,000 subscribers. But when this video goes out, we're on our way to 100K. So if you know anyone Dude, that plays awesome. the guitar... If you know anyone that plays the guitar who might like that pedal show, please ask them to subscribe. 100K subscribers doesn't mean anything to anyone except it's a lovely number. Yeah. And Dan and great. I can go down the pub and have a drink and, and celebrate 100,000 subscribers. And YouTube will send us a little plaque to the wall. Do they? They do. They send oh, I, th oh I, think, I think you get a little diary as well, don't you? Do you? Yeah, I think they send you a diary. Oh, that's so cool. So cool. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so massive thank you to everyone that's subscribed. Um, massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderton's Music, where I got all of these pedals. Yeah, and where I got all but three. Um, <laughs> uh, Rift City in Rift the US, USA. Rift City Guitar, and Pedal Empire in Australia. Yes, Fabulous if you, guys, if you fabulous want to buy people. something, please check them out. Yep. That's it. That's it. Oh, and also, if you uh, want to buy a t-shirt or yep. a hat or a beanie, head over to um, thatpedalshowstore.com. Yep, all good. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Bye.